All right, what's up, guys? Um, the play review here of the window drivers match that was a couple days ago. Uh, we ended up losing. It was a well deserved, well deserved loss. Uh, with this loss, we're going down to the contenders stage, unfortunately, which means that the best we'll be able to do over the next four weeks is compete for the the ninth seed. Heading into the playoffs, which is still a a good spot for us. I say any anywhere from the ninth to sixteenth seed would be a good goal for us. Um, just gonna go through this replay review, and I did watch this right before, um, so hopefully it'll be a little bit shorter. I'm gonna talk less about rotations this time. Um, because I don't think that's I don't think rotations are the reasons window drivers are a better team than us. Two main themes that I've kind of noticed, and this is not just against windows drivers, but um, whenever we play ranked and we get into like mid GC one lobbies, I've noticed this as well. We just feel a bit outclassed, if you will. Um, Feels like we don't have control. Feels like every time we're in their half, there's a defensive lockdown. Like there's really no high probability chances for us. And it seems like we're often giving up high probability chances for our opponents to score. Um, and yeah, got it, kind of trying to figure out why. And I think two, two main themes. One is that when you get to these mid GC one ranks, the opponents do a much better job of having a organized passing play or an organized transition onto offense as a team. Um, and we can, well, I'll, there'll probably be a couple of examples in this replay. And then the other main theme is our opponents do a good job of letting us beat ourselves. Um, meaning that they do a good job of letting us use boost and commit for touches that aren't very valuable. And then they capitalize on them afterwards. Uh, we'll go through a few examples here. Um, this was game, I think game three in the series. So we won the first game, then they won the second. And then this was game three. It felt like this was the game where the tides really started turning. It felt like uh, we had lost all momentum. Um, so it would be a good one to go through here. Couple fakes there on the uh, kickoff ball. Up to go for the high center. And I like this. Um, so this is this is an idea of almost letting, like letting the opponents outplay, outplay themselves, right? So this is a good this is a good example here where we kind of do that to them, right? They double commit, basically give Noah a free ball here, um, and they use a bunch of boost to do nothing. And Noah looks like I don't know if this is intentional, but I like this play a lot. Rather than boom this back or potentially get dunked by, he sees Ander here. He hits it to the side where, you know, he sees Aaron out of the corner of his eye. And I think as we get better, as we develop more trust, like this will be a better communication thing and, and Aaron might be better positioned for this. So rather than like he knows he grottos or knows passing to the left here. There's a little bit of confusion here. So I'm two here. I see Aaron misses this first touch, which prompts me to come up. This could have been really bad. Um, B90 cool, right? If he gets a good touch here, this is a dangerous situation all of a sudden. But it's no harm done. Like, um, like this happens to me too, where the, you don't expect the ball to bounce off the wall. Like, this is just a reading the ball thing. Uh, now it's a little bit awkward here, but it seems like Aaron and I do a good job of um, doing a good job of being organized. We get a passing play here, but this, like, in my opinion, this passing play is just not good enough. You know what I mean? To have a little space here. Like I think the idea is right here. It's just it's just not good enough. Like Ander Ander ends up missing this ball, but like it's just not fast enough 
it's not giving Aaron enough space. Just when, when we're both going forward like this around midfield, it's just it's really hard to get like a sideways pass. I don't know if it's worth the idea, and maybe it's just more beneficial to go for a um, a solo aerial play here. Um, and again, with the idea not necessarily to score right away, but it could lead to a, a high probability chance if I'm able to beat one or two defenders in the air, and then teammates can capitalize on it. Here's an example here again, like, uh, let's go to my POV. So this happens after the passing play. This is like a shot, this is a mechanics thing again. This is probably a shot here. I just miss it a little bit. I get really, for whatever reason, this is like such a dead touch. I don't know how the ball doesn't move that much. But this is kind of another example here of, of the opponents kind of letting us out play, play yourselves. Like, thinking about this ball, like, what what's the point of diving in on this with all the boost, you know? It ends up pretty much being about as good as it can be, but there's still no scoring chance. Then our opponents here outplay themselves. They do a double commit on basically no threat at all. They don't realize Aaron's not nowhere in the area. Great um, play by AI Bing Engineer. Look how he controls this one. Like this is a good. This is again way up to these higher ranks. There is a mechanics difference as well, I believe. It specifically comes to like ball control and being able to quickly get two touches. So we go to where is he? I think I passed him. Yeah, AI Bing Engineer here. Nice double commit. <laughs> this is kind of no idea why he's going for this ball, but. This is a nice play here, so after this 50-50, does a great job of really soft control. And Noah does a great job to fake this challenge here, right? So this is a great play because if Noah ends up committing for this, right? You see Noah driving up here. Um, now all of a sudden, I could be in a potentially rough spot um, with both my teammates committed upfield and maybe Ander gets in a 50-50 with me that this could lead to a great high scoring chance. So this is a great play by Bing Engineer, but it looks like Ander doesn't even end up contesting it. So I, I get, I get a free touch here. It looks like I try for, so this is a, again, like a mechanics thing. I think I try for a two touch play off the wall to myself here, but it's just not good enough, right? It's too slow. And then at this point, I should probably know I'm too slow and just not even go anymore. But I end up going for it again. Right? Just kind of outplaying myself, right? Using more boost, using more time, leaving my teammates now in a 2v3. Just a very quick, easy beat for Andre. And it's like a good setup for him too. He's a, he like has enough... It's so easy for him that he's able to get a nice control touch and then go for a 50-50. Like this should not, this chance should not be getting created. I mean, I think Aaron knows he just needs a better touch there. Which again, it's like a mechanic, like just mechanically a gap. And B90 cool does a nice play. Right, hits it off the ceiling to himself. This is very threatening now. Ends up not working out, but this was this could have been a um, decent chance for a goal for sure. Yeah. I like this touch, like... So this is an example here where... 
The opponents are just well organized on defense here. I like that, honestly, this is a good touch, right? Like he's hitting it powerful, hitting it high. Just like when you get, when you play these better opponents, it's like, it feels like, it's like these types of plays just don't, they just have this stuff covered, you know? So I don't know really what to do here. Maybe he goes for like a, maybe a, Again, it's a mechanics thing too, because you have to be like, but maybe just a, a soft touch middle here, perhaps, you know, maybe hitting this with the tires of your car bouncing out directly to his left to where I am could be an optimal play. But I mean, I'm not necessarily saying I have a solution here, but it just it just feels like these sorts of plays, even if you shot it on that with a good shot, it feels like it's going to just get saved pretty easily. Nice play by Aaron here. Noah's there to follow. This is a nice play. So this was a scoring chance. And it was created by kind of good spacing. Aaron makes a nice play to beat one here. And Noah's in a position to follow up and beat the second man. And then it's just... I. Honestly, I probably shouldn't even go here. Even though Noah beats the second man, like, it's kind of impossible to score this unless I'm, like, positioned inappropriately upfield here, I think. But ideally, like, this just goes... Yeah, he's just, he's just got all the options covered being 900 cool here. I mean, maybe I'm just more afield and I might be able to beat him. But. Kind of a whiff on the uh, Windows drivers here. This is a scoring chance as well. Almost. Good unlucky, honestly. I think Noah scores that the majority of the time. <laughs> Flipping around. I feel it. Just a poor panicky play by me here. I think this is another example of the opponents just kind of letting myself outplay myself here. Get a touch around Onder, which is great. The ball, I wanted to this to fly in front of me more. But it ends up flying behind me. And I just kind of panic, right? So I think I need to... I think someone's gonna be there. And I have to rush this ball and then I realize no one's going. And so then I just do this little soft touch hoping that a teammate can follow, but it just it just doesn't work, you know, like But I feel like I shouldn't leave this as well. I feel like I should jump for this. But maybe just a back hit this into the back corner right position where a teammate will be able to follow up or just hit it high and not so weak this is a nice play I like his position here, right? So he's not covering the hard clear, which he shouldn't be. That should be me. But he's covering, like, a, if Ander tries to go for a two-touch play, he's covering that option, right? So pretty well positioned. And then, yeah, I don't know, like, what the best play here is. Maybe a pass middle, but, like, we see B90 cool is, like, going to be on a pass middle probably or the Bing Engineer. Like they have all these options covered. So maybe it's more just like a um, turning to hit it high or going for an aerial solo play or something. But Noah might be able to turn on this in time, but I think at best it's just going to be a 50. It says, so this is what I want to talk about here. It's a good extension by Onder. 
So rather than rotating back immediately, he kind of lingers, right? And the Bing Engineer, I think he was intending to pass to Ander here, ends up getting a kind of a poor ceiling shot. But again, like this kind of setup, right, is very threatening. Because you have Noah and I. So Aaron's now committed in their corner. You have Noah and I. I'm covering like if AI Bing Engineer wants to try and do a solo play or a soft touch play. And Noah has to cover if AI Bing Engineer is going to do a hard clear. But, in, but it's really hard to also cover an additional passing option to Ander here, which is why it's open. And it's such a good play because if this happens, right, not only is it, it's, it's a pretty damn easy beat on me, but it's also confusing for Noah because a lot of the time he might not realize what's happening, right? And he might view the pass as like a hard clear and then Ander's going to beat him to that. And even if, he, even if he waits, like he waits right here, Kind of a, I mean, uh, the um, probably better to get a little bit more of a wide turn rather than going in goal and turning around and stopping all your momentum. But we're not going to talk much about that. But even though Noah waits, like Noah's in a tough spot here. If like this is a very, they've created such a good like position here, all by this play of AI being engineer, right? Rather than going for an immediate hard clear, or rather than trying to go for a solo play, recognizing that Anders upfield and, and hitting a pass, right? It's also paired with the fact that it's, it's well-timed with, you know, Aaron being out of the play for a few seconds. But th th these are the types of plays that I think we, we need on our team, right? More of. Just because when, when you get to these GC1 ranks, like, I feel like the, these are the types of plays that that maximize your scoring. Maximize the pressure. Noah makes a good play here, I think. Um, where is he? This opts for a hard clear, which I think is totally fine, right? Um, the reason I think it's totally fine is I just got demoed. He sees Aaron still ahead of him. It's dangerous to try to go for a solo play here if it doesn't work out. Um, so again, the clear doesn't really accomplish anything offensively, but it, it buys time, which is why I think it's a, a good play here. Again, here's another one. Right, so again, unfortunately due to the clear, right, it gives the opponent some time as well. So they do another one here, and it's, again, Ander and the Engineer, I believe. I don't even know if this was intended by by B900 Cool. This little pass over to Ander, kind of nifty. Kind of like it. But he's just, like, again, like this play, it's going to beat me every time. And maybe this is like a second man goal thing, too, like... When you get up to these higher ranks, rather than prioritizing covering the solo play option, you prioritize covering a pass instead. But because I can't cover both, you know, like I need to cover if he continues driving up this wall, and I can't cover, and I try, <laughs> just just out of my reach there. And then you see how it's such a tough spot for Aaron all of a sudden now. Right, that's another high scoring chance here. It's a it's a pretty poor touch by Bing Engineer, but you can see the the threat, the potential threat that happens, right? And here it's like just a situation where yeah, or not gonna harp too much on rotations, but Kind of a confusing near post rotation here, for sure. Maybe if you're going out, like, if you're gonna rotate near post, commit commit to following up this ball, don't just drive back to the corner, but. Aaron's getting bumped as well.
a, a great example here of the opponents just letting us outplay ourselves. I like the idea going for a two-touch play, but I mean, this is just, it's too heavy of a touch, right? Um, in being engineer's perspective, like he's actually, he's like, he's like, he sees you there and he just lets you outplay yourself. And that, th I mean, this, I'm not calling Aaron out or anything. It happens, it's, it, it happens to me too. It's like, here's probably an example. All right, so I think this is an, an, another example of the ball just bouncing out. Like, I have no idea why this ball bounces out so much, but I wasn't expecting it. But, like, I'm driving up here. I see Onder coming in. I'm thinking, oh, my God, I have to beat him. Let's go to Onder's POV. Onder's just like, sure, you, you got it, dude. Let me, I'll let you just make a make a bad touch, right? Just, just letting me outplay myself. And I actually end up, like, making a very dangerous touch for our team. Again, like so, this is an, uh, pretty much the same exact thing that happened earlier. Noah goes for the hard clear, which, you know, based on this ball, is a very difficult ball to try and control, so I'm a fan of, like, hard clear play. Uh, it doesn't really accomplish anything offensively, but at least it relieves pressure for a second. But look at what Ander does, like... He passes it to his, his teammate on the side here. B900, cool. I think it's intentional anyway. Like, it's the same exact thing they, they did earlier. Like, these little, like, passing plays save them boost, saves, the, like, makes them play faster, and confuses us. Here's another one of us just out playing ourselves here. All right, so not really a threat. I mean, Aaron probably doesn't want to do this. He's probably just positioned a little bit far forward here. I think I remember this. Yeah, so this this is like the danger of the near post rotations. Again, I'm not gonna, I'm definitely team um, near post rotations are okay. Like there's, there's always exceptions to the rule, but it's just confusing for me when you do something like this and then, and then you have to like, just recognize whenever you do a near post rotation, like it's confusing for, um, the teammates because they don't know if you're going to turn or not. So, they, and I know you do this a lot. So when I see you doing this, like I'm assuming you're not turning a lot because you don't turn a lot. But then when you do turn, it's like, oh shit, you know. But just another example of like the opponent's doing nothing, right? The opponents are literally doing nothing, and they're just allowing us to outplay ourselves. And this was a deep, good shot by Bing Engineer as well. I probably could have saved it if I didn't grab this boost, but I just thought I had time to grab it. It's kind of a banger, banger slanger. Um, and, you know, I don't know how, like, we're already at around 20 minutes. Um, so I don't know how worth it is to go through the rest of this replay. But I think, like, the, the two main themes, again, are, are kind of crystal clear for us to kind of uh, reach into that top eight level. Um, and it, it comes down to just recognizing um, touches that aren't as, that just aren't worth like freaking out and committing for and using boost for in time to go get. Um, like I, hopefully you kind of saw several examples there of the Windows drive is just letting us, letting us commit for things that they didn't think were valuable to commit to and then all of a sudden they had a very advantageous situation from that uh, and the second main theme was how well they're able to um, organize themselves via passing right to speed up plays to get easy beats and to create the dangerous situations on offense um, and then also there's the mechanical gap as well right they're they're able to 
create two touch plays um, like solo individually. It seems like easier than we are. I don't think um, you know any of these gaps are, are stuff that we can't make up. We have a month here. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's kind of going to be on us individually to um, to work on our mechanics, right? Try to purposely train two touch plays. Um, and, then, and then it's going to be, this is going to be more of like a team, team practice. I do think we need to practice our passing plays, like a deliberate passing, passing practice rather than just spamming ranks. Um, and maybe some drills of just like, not, um, like trying to not commit for things as much, um, and letting opponents outplay themselves. I can't really think of a good example of that, but maybe there's probably something to do with that. But I, I think those are kind of the three main themes that I've noticed, not just with windows drivers, but with a lot of teams that that we've either played ranked or in CEA that we, I just feel outclassed in. Um, there's that mechanical gap of, of executing two touch plays. There's the team passing gap, being able to quickly generate advantageous situations on offense. Um, and then there's just kind of this, this patience gap, right. Of letting the opponents outplay themselves. Um, Anyway, hopefully this makes sense. Um, yeah, let me know if you agree, disagree with anything. Um, yeah. See ya.